we begin, play a little game with me. Just play along. Look around the room that you're in and notice all the blue that you can notice. Find as much blue as you can find, as fast as you can find blue. Good, now just red. Find red. Find all the red that you can find as quickly as you can find red. Good, now just yellow. Find all the yellow that you can find. Now just green. Find the green. Okay, you can stop. Now when we started and you went looking for blue, where did you find the blue? I can see some all around me. I don't know where you found it, but you do. And here's the important question. When you stopped looking for blue and started looking for red, what happened to the blue? You know, most people say it just faded into the background or I didn't even notice it anymore. That's because the brain is a goal-oriented mechanism. The brain is a meaning-making machine. So we'll always go looking for meaning and we'll always find what we go looking for. So when you decided to go looking for blue, you were easily able to find blue. And as soon as you switched to looking for red, you took my suggestion to change and look for red, the blue just fades into the background and you are hyper-focused on red. Then you look for yellow, the blue and the red fade away. Then you look for green and all the other colors fade away. They're still there, the other colors. You're just not focusing on them anymore. The game is here to show you that the brain can only focus on one thing at a time. You can focus on one thing at a time. Oh, a lot of people say they're really good at multitasking, but the truth is they're good at switching from one thing to another and back again. You can only focus on one thing at a time. That's very important when you're thinking about texting and driving. You can either focus on texting or you can focus on driving. It's also very important when we're talking about change because the brain becomes hyper-focused on one thing or another. As soon as you change the focus, that old thing goes away. That's important in change work because it's a pattern interrupt, a break state. And we use that in the meta pattern. Let me give you a clear example of the meta pattern. Do you sometimes worry about being effective with helping a client change? Do you worry about the written word or spoken presentations? Do you worry about getting your message across? It's a very interesting thing to consider. So imagine for a moment having one simple system that will take you from what you want to success, that moves you elegantly through change. That's the meta pattern. And I'm going to teach it to you now. That was the meta pattern in action. The first thing I did was associate you into an issue. Do you worry about helping your clients with change? Do you worry about making a written presentation? If your answer to that query is yes, you're hooked, you're interested, you're in to the problem, you're lighting up your problem state. Then I said, imagine having a system that will elegantly move you through the change. That changed you from the problem state to imagining possibilities. That was a simple break state or pattern interrupt. Once you were imagining that, I presented the solution to you. The meta pattern will do that for you. Let me teach you the meta pattern now. And when you learn it, then you can just slap that pattern onto your problems and you've got a handy solution. That's the meta pattern in action. Now let's go through it again. The meta pattern of change. First, associate into the problem. That's what you do in advertising. That's what you do when you're working with clients. It's what you do in all sorts of scenarios. If you want to make a presentation, 
think about using this meta pattern solution. If you want to write an article, think about using the meta pattern solution. And when you're working with change with a client, the meta pattern is your meta pattern for change. The first thing you want to do, the first step, associate into the problem. We want to associate into the problem because that lights up all the neural pathways along the way. And once we have those brain pathways lit up, it's easy to work with them. First, we have to associate into the issue. I do that with a client simply by saying, what change do you want to make today? As they start telling me about the change, they're telling me the trance that they're already in. They're telling me all of their beliefs about their limits and what they would get out of making the change. Tell me about it is the simplest of all inductions. Tell me about it. Tell me more. Is there something more I need to know about that? All of those are deepening techniques to deepen the trance of the existing problem. I only want those neural pathways lit up until I know that they are active and lit, and then I want to break that pattern. So step number one, light up those neural pathways. Associate into the problem. Step number two is dissociate away from the problem. Have your focus move to anything else. As soon as I get enough information from my client to begin to work on a change that can be effective, I want to break them out of that problem state. Stop that thinking because it's very hard to come up with a solution from a problem mindset. So I want to interrupt the pattern. I might say, oh, play this game with me for a moment and play the color game. It's illustrative of you'll get what you focus on. So that's a teaching moment. It's a break state moment. I could do that just as easily by saying, okay, I ask a lot of silly questions when we work together. What was your first car? They often look at me like that, like, what the hell? And then they start telling me about their first car. And I deepen the trance into that by saying, what color was it? How much did you like it? What was your favorite time with it? Maybe I'll say, who was your first boyfriend or girlfriend? Tell me about them. What do you remember? What was their best quality? Now they're not on the problem anymore. We move to a different focus. We interrupted the problem pattern. So step number one, associate into the problem. Step number two of the meta pattern, dissociate away from the problem. Focus on anything else. Now we can start talking about a solution mindset. So let's pretend for a moment that your client wants confidence. Oh, but they've, they've lit up all of the pathways about not being confident. Oh, I freeze. My hands sweat. I can't do it. My stomach gets all full of butterflies. They're now associated into all the feelings, all the sounds, everything that goes along with that problem state. We break that. And once that state is broken, then I can come back and say, so is, has there ever been a time in your life when you have been confident about something? Is there something that you've done very well? Well, yeah. Oh, tell me about that. And then we light up the neural pathways of their success. One client was afraid to write on a flip chart in front of members of a board that she'd been hired to. That was a little outsized emotion for the event. But when I ask, is there anything that you have done that you had to do in front of people that you were confident about? She went right back to high school and said, yes, when she was in high school, she was an equestrian. She jumped hurdles with her horse. How did you do that effectively and successfully? She said, well, we practiced. We really practiced every day. I was out there with that horse and we practiced. We jumped the hurdles. We rode around in the stable. We became a team. We got all of the moves into muscle memory and we knew each other very well. And when it came time for the competition, well, I didn't have to think about anything but enjoying myself because it was already in muscle memory. Bing, bing, bing. I think she just handed us a solution on a silver platter. So I asked her, what might happen if when you have to go in and make these things on the flip chart in front of the board of directors, what might happen? I'm just curious if before you did that, you put everything 
in an order, in some kind of organized fashion, and you practiced it, and you practiced writing on the board, and you got it all into muscle memory, and maybe you work with somebody else, and you practice it in front of them or take their feedback, I wonder what might happen once you have to write on the board and up on the board in the board meeting. This client said, wow, I can do that. And it changed everything for her because we went through the meta pattern. Associate in, dissociate away from, find a solution. And then I suggested, I wonder what might happen if you took those steps and apply them to what you're doing today. I really didn't have to make any suggestions. I really didn't have to come up with any answers because I know the truth. The answers reside in my client. They've hired me because they don't yet know how to access the answers they already hold inside. So I take them through the meta pattern from the get-go. Associate into the problem. Tell me about what you want to change. As soon as I get enough information, dissociate from that problem. Think about anything else. Talk about anything else for a moment. Then associate into a possible solution. Tell me about a time. If I do regression work with a client, that's the point at which we do informed child work, grown up. Come in and tell the little one, first of all, how much you love them, how proud you are of them. And then perhaps gives them some adult wisdom about how you might do it today with your adult wisdom. They always have solutions for the little one. And then when we say, how can we apply that to what we're working on today? They put all the pieces together, come up with their own solution because they've moved into a solution state. And at least they have something different to try than what they were trying before. And anything different will at least produce a different result not the same old, same old result they were getting. And that is the meta pattern of change. I have to think, I believe John Overdurf, even though I've never actually trained with John, I believe he may be the instigator, the inventor, the originator of the meta pattern of change. I actually learned it from Alyssa Tears and Sean and Sarah Carson, and I really thank them a lot. The meta pattern of change really works when you're doing change work with clients, but imagine using that same pattern when you're writing a story, writing an article, writing an ad piece, about to make the presentation. I did it for this today. I just took us through the meta pattern and it worked. If you need the handout, you know what to do. Go to Karen Hand dot com slash meta hyphen pattern. There you have the handout spelled out for you. It's good working with you today. If you need mentoring or hypnosis or NLP work, let me know. Karen at karenhand.com.